Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Spring 2024 New Jersey Film Festival Filmmaker Interview Series. Today, we have a wonderful panel of films by women filmmakers. We have three filmmakers here from all over the country. We, we do have some Jersey girls here, too, but they're not all in Jersey these days. And I'll introduce you to them in a second. But the New Jersey Film Festival is in its 42nd annu biannual year. We show the New Jersey Film Festival in the spring and in the fall. And you say, wait a second, Al, spring, it's taking place in January and February. Yes, yes, I know it's winter, but we are aligned with the university calendar because we're housed at Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey, and that's where the festival is taking place. And it's uh, the spring semester, so hence the title, Spring 2024. We'll be showing over 40 films over the weekends between January 26th and February 18th. We show films on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays, and they're all available online. We stayed a hybrid festival after the pandemic broke because we have people that watch our films from all over the country. We have one woman from Oklahoma City. She watches everything. She buys a festival pass. And so we did not want to cut those folks off. So all the films are available on their show date for 24 hours. There are also in-person screenings that are taking place. And the program that we're going to be talking about today is Shorts Program 3, which is taking place on Friday, February 9th. And the in-person show is at 7 p.m. So if you want more information, uh, stick around at the very end. I'll show you how you can buy tickets. But if you want it quick and dirty, you go to njfilmfest.com. You click on current events and you click the red button for the spring 2024 New Jersey Film Festival. And that'll bounce you to our eventive website, which is where you buy tickets and get more information. All right. So today we have wonderful filmmaker. We have Evelyn Reese, she's from Bridgewater, New Jersey. We're showing her wonderful film, Innocent Observer, which is in the student category. Then we have Amanda Prager, who goes by AJ now, and we're showing her film, Seeing Other People, which is actually the third film by uh, AJ that we've screened at the New Jersey Film Festival. She's an alumnus, and we'll be talking a little bit about that too. And then we have Natalie Baracchio, whose film Wiener is going to be playing. She's also an alumnus. We showed one of her earlier films in 2019, a wonderful film called Beast. And um, we're going to be showing her film Wiener, which is about the college admission process. So welcome ladies. I, I really, I love your, your work and I, I love your films. So it's wonderful to see you and to finally meet two of my, two alumni to our festival because you guys are in LA, right? Both of you are in LA? right now, Amanda? Yep, yep. And you know Natalie is too. Yeah, I am as well. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So it's nice to finally meet you guys. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Welcome, Evelyn, too. Mm -hmm. I've known Evie now for almost a year. It's actually half a year, I think, so so far. Anyway, so uh, I'll start with Evelyn. Tell us about Innocent Observer. Why did you make this film? Um, one day I was really just thinking about the idea of he loves me, he loves me not. And I kind of wanted to see what it would be like if it wasn't necessarily romantic, but almost like obsession based. Mm. So started there and then it kind of kept developing as I got going. Wonderful. Natalie, tell us about how you made your film. Why did you make Wiener? Um, yeah, I guess I was in grad school at the time and I was, um, sort of sitting and watching the different tours of students and parents coming in looking at um, some of the, the schools that I was at. And um, it just brought me back to those memories of when I was in that position and the kind of absurdity of that process. Um, and that kind of inspired me. I started thinking about that more. And um, yeah, I kind of went from there. Where did you go to school? Um, I did my undergrad or yeah, I did my undergrad at Carnegie Mellon and then my um, MFA at Emerson College in Boston. Wow. Very cool. My brother went to Carnegie Mellon. Oh, no way. Yes. Yeah. And he's a, a concert bassist for the Buffalo Symphony. Wow. Okay. <laughs> so he went from Carnegie Mellon to Juilliard and then he went. Yeah. Um, but he was a rock and roller first. He's weird. You oh, know? Usually it's the yeah. other way around. <laughs> it's a All over small the place. world. Yeah, that's fine. Amanda, AJ, tell us about your film. Um, I made mine because I was in a pretty bad relationship, but I 
had no way to like metaphorize it. That's not a word, but you know what I mean? And yeah, make yeah. it symbolic without it becoming very dark. So I was like, how do I make this sort of more how I experienced it, which is in like more like a slow, gradual realization rather than a very like dark metaphor, like metaphor. That's not, that wasn't my aim. So yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, the name of your film is Seeing Other People. And so that is something that um, your film is about a, a young woman who's meeting her boyfriend and she's going to tell him, I want to see other people. So it's it's right up front in the title. There are some twists and turns in your movie. We won't spoil them. But the special effects in your film were absolutely wonderful. Can you tell us a little bit about the process? Totally, totally. Um, it's this great... Um, VFX artist named Alan Chamberlain. Shout out to Alan. Um, he is extremely talented. And, you know, the initial con conception was everyone who's part of this, the boyfriend, I mean, I guess I'm spoiling it. The boyfriend is a part of a hive mind, so he can control those around him. And the way that we decided to indicate that was through um, eyes, like their eyes changing color. But Alan had the brilliant idea of like, he sort of has like the Disney finger, like sort mm -hmm. of the the way that the Disney Channel used to have those ads that was like, you know. Um, <laughs> and so I just thought we really wanted to showcase just how he was controlling and manipulating everyone around the room. And if that didn't come through, then the concept wouldn't come through. Mm -hmm. So we had to make it really clear. It was a very important job. And I'm really proud of how it turned out. I, I saw a Harry Potter vibe too, in, in some ways. <laughs> I mean, For I sure. I really like the magical quality and the lighting's amazing. The cinematography is amazing. And, you know, you put it all really well together. And I wanted to also give a shout out to um, the lead actress, um, Sabina Friedman Seitz. She's really wonderful. She does it. You can't take your eyes off her and she's really very compelling. So how did you find her? This is, I mean, this is a cool story. So like I initially had cast the Jesse's like in the movie, legitimate girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So in the film. And then she got basically got coronavirus in, and she was really lived really far away. And we shot during coronavirus. Like this was something that was inevitable. Someone was going to get it. I didn't expect it to be such a prominent member of the cast and crew. Mm. And I was like, well, what are we going to do? Like, I don't know what we're going to do. So we found Sabina, thank God, 36 hours before shooting. Wow. And we're like, she was like, I'll fly to L.A. I'm fine with it. Let's go. And she flew here. We did rehearsals for like six hours and then film the next day. Like it wow. was, it was quick. <laughs> it, it doesn't feel like that at all. It feels like it was really, there was a gestation period that went on and because it really looks very slick. It's really well put together and it moves very nicely. The testament to her talent that she was able to really hold that, to, that whole piece together. Cause it does fall apart without her. I think without her being able to act, have so many emotions underneath mm. you know that she's not saying you know so i love her i think she did a great job <laughs> she did she really did uh, natalie we showed your film beast in 2019 which starred these two amazing sisters um yeah uh, the, the gorillas i think i remember their name even that's pretty amazing in its mm -hmm. own right and it was a pretty dark film about abuse and um bullying um, mm -hmm. And this film is completely different in many ways. I mean, I, it, it's a comedy and it's about the craziness of the admission process, but it does have its dark side, I, I think, does it? A little bit, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think uh, it definitely, I think different, what I've been able to tell from audiences is that different people with different experiences pick up on that or don't pick up on that, um, but in the, I think at the heart of the film, it's like this father-daughter relationship um, yeah. and the two of them sort of going through this process together and um, what it brings out from their different worldviews and um, obviously like different life experiences and ages. Um, but yeah, I think there's little touches of that in their relationship and also in the I guess dynamics of the process of academia itself. Yeah. I mean, you feel like a piece of meat when you're in the system. But I, I thought I thought there's this animated character, or, or I should say a, a kind of 
I don't know. I kept I kept thinking of HR Puffin stuff, which was <laughs> these these puppet yeah. puppet people that would populate on Saturday morning when I was a kid. And yeah. you know, there there's lots of other examples, you know, the mascots that you see at a baseball game or and I kept on thinking of that and I thought, you know, yeah, this must be the dad. But it's so much more than that, right? The 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 hot dog figure that's kind of subliminally manifested by the lead character who's also wonderful you have to tell us about her um it, it really is more than just the father it's about the process of going to school and being on your own i guess yeah and i guess um sometimes it, it's basically like the lead character um she has this uh comic that she draws and the character that she draws in it um sort of comes to comes life to life yeah. yeah um and he or he I, it I don't know his his name is President Wiener but um right. just uh is kind of an embodiment of her um creativity at times but then also at other times he can be quite destructive so um it's kind of her like grappling with that I guess mm -hmm. very cool <laughs> Evie, your film is also about a troubled individual, a female who's obsessed with this boy. Um, so tell us about the process that you went through. You started off with he loves me, he loves me not. And then tell us about the people you worked with and, you know, a little bit about the process of making the film. Yeah, so I started with he loves me, he loves me not. But then through filming, I started to touch into more issues like body image and kind of like the cookie cutter mold were all forced or at least pushed into trying to fit into. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to work with two of my really good friends that are very much willing to deal with me and kind of the spiral I go down because I don't really like writing scripts. So I just go along with whatever comes to me. But yeah. And then I think the more as we went along, the darker it got. Originally, it wasn't supposed to be so forwardly horror, but I think it definitely progressed pretty quickly. It's a kind of high school fatal attraction, you know. And, yeah. Yeah, for sure. But it's so much more interesting because she's, you can't take your eyes off of her either, the lead yeah. character. And she's, you know, taking pictures and s scoping around. And, you know, as I was watching all three of your films, I saw these women that have to kind of deal with the phallocentric system and how they cope with it in their own way. And did you guys see the same thing? Please ask yourselves each other's questions because it is a panel. It's not just me asking you questions. Feel free to jump in, anyone. I have a question. I want to know how, um, uh, Natalie, you came up with the character of Wiener. Um, yeah, it's, I, um, I had originally written the story without that character in it at all. And it was much more of like a, a very like realist um, portrayal of this story. And I think um, to be honest, I think I, I, I was in school at the time. And I think that um, I was in a place where everything was just feeling very serious, like in classes and in analysis of what we were doing. And I kind of, just, I think it was a response to that and just wanting to embrace like more absurdity and silliness and do something that um, kind of uh, lent itself to a very obvious analysis, but also because it's so obvious and it's like a story about a father figure and it's like a hot dog character. Like there's, there's a very obvious and silly um, way to interpret that, I think it just made me laugh to be in very serious conversations about that. Yeah. Um, so I guess there is a level in which it was just a joke for myself to help me like get through um, my classes in this process where we were having to take things very seriously. Um, and yeah, I guess it just came from wanting to have a little more fun with things. That's why I use the word fellow centric. Yeah, sure. <laughs> both uh, AJ's film and yours deal with that. And, and, you know, the finger is very important in your film. And I, mm. we don't have to go very far to talk about why. And <laughs> I think the male gaze in Evie's film is also in question because now we have the women returning the gaze. And so it, it's really interesting. I think the panel that I put together just kind of, you know, 
obviously showed concerns that women have these days, you know, post Me Too, um, you know, the, the questioning of the, the value of the female in society that, you know, the right always tries to poo poo. And, you know, we're here to celebrate man and woman. Our film festival is a humanist film festival, and we want to celebrate the positive aspects of all people, not just men. So we're very proud to be showing your, your movies. I wanted to just give you a little bit of feedback too. I've been doing this for some of the Q&A, something I didn't do previously that I started to do. And I wanted to read some of the judges' comments to you because you know you were one of, for the New Jersey Film Festival component, uh, about 30 films that we selected from 633. So you should be absolutely very proud you're the creme de la creme. You know, there are a lot of other good movies that we didn't select. And um, so the judges usually are the ones that pick the films, right? Because they score your film. And I'd like to read some of the comments that some of the judges wrote. Not all of them. Uh, remember, each film is watched by at least five judges. And then they give it a ranked score from zero to 10, with zero being terrible, 10 being excellent. And then they give comments and they rank creativity, originality, script, performances, and that kind of stuff. But what I'm going to read to you is the score, and then I'm going to read you some comments. So for Wiener, this was by a guy, and he wrote, he gave you a nine. He said, awesome stuff, very cute, very wacky, slice of life with some surrealist elements and a nice message. Jolly good show. Sure. This one is by a woman. She gave it an eight. And I think it's funny because she also, the first word she used was wacky. So <laughs> we got two wackies in there. I liked it though. It has a lot of heart. The wiener noises can be a bit grating, but sure. the coloring is really <laughs> well done. So that's okay. another comment. And then this is another gal. She gave it an eight. And she said that it was a good mix of comedy and heart. Writing was great and characters were interesting. Easy to stay engaged. So oh. that was for Wiener. For seeing other people, this fellow gave your film a nine. This was such a fun watch the whole way through. It has it had such a creative premise for its love story and was overall such a refreshing and original take on love. This is by a woman and she gave you an 8.5 and the filmmaker could have taken a very cookie cutter approach a cookie cutter rom-com approach, but it was refreshing. Was a refreshing spin that spanned multiple genres. Great use of color and light. Acting was good, and the premise was extremely original and fun to watch. And then this gal wrote, and I'm not going to tell you everything she wrote because it kind of spoils the film. So I'm just going to read what she wrote. She gave it a seven, and she wrote, "I like this." You get the general idea of the story, but you never know exactly where it's going to go. Color was very interesting. And uh, I'm not going to tell you what she writes because she does say it would be fun to screen. So we'll leave it at that. For Innocent Observer, we have uh, this guy gave you an eight. Great poetic voiceover narration. Actors are engaged and do a good job conveying the story of a female stalker. And then this woman wrote seven, she gave you a seven, nice images, story not that original, but delivery makes it a very good film. So those are the judges' comments that I wrote down. And so that means that you guys are in, in, in excellent company. We're showing a lot of really wonderful films. Um, a lot of them are very challenging films. And um, normally I'd be able to provide filmmakers a pass so you could watch online, but it became cost prohibitive. I tried that the first time and Eventive charges us for every stream. It really is kind of, oh, wow. but if you ever are, if you're planning on coming, you can come to any of the screenings for free. We don't charge for the in-person ones. So if you want to make an event of it, come and hang out with us for a weekend or two. So, all right, now comes the crunch time because uh, we're almost out of time and I need to share screen. Let me make sure I've got everything set up. I do. I'm going to share screen and go here. And so the way that you would normally go and get tickets for us, everybody can see this, right? Um, this is our homepage, which is njfilmfest.com.
And the space that you see in red behind, that's the actual screening space building, Voorhees Hall. It's a, attached to the Zimmerli Art Museum, which is the University Art Museum. And it's where the art history department is based. They have a really wonderful space that I helped configure for cinema. It's got soundproofing. It's got um, a, graded, a graded floor, so it moves up. The seats are cushy and the sound system's good. Um, and uh, the screen is huge and the um, high definition projection system. So normally what you would do is you would click current events, which just kind of bounces you down where you see our cat. This is the cat mascot. Miss Amy passed away in January of last year, oh. actually a year ago. And she was one of our beloved pets. I do a lot of animal rescue work and she was loved by everybody in our house. All the cats loved her and she, she died of cancer. So we memorialize her this way. She's the art for the film festival. And normally what you would do, everything would normally be here, but now you've got to click on this button and this button will bounce you to our eventive welcome page where you get to see Miss Amy again. And you've got four buttons that you need to push. Uh, the ticket screening one is the one where you buy tickets. So we'll push that one first. And everything's divvied up by category. And there's basic information about the festival at the very top, but our program is under short. And it's this one where we have an image uh, of Amanda's film. And to learn more, you can click on it or you can click pre-order now. And you just click on it again and you can register and buy your tickets. You only have to register once. Once you're in the system, you can buy tickets without registering. And you can see that we're showing a number of films, seeing other people. Bluebird is a, another film that's a student film that was a, a judge's favorite. Um, this is Evie's film, is still from hers. No More Love is the film from India that was set in France. There's a shot from Wiener. And then we have a documentary of all things that I stuck in. So there is a film. We've been showing all of the Joey Skaggs oral history projects. We're big fans of Joey Skaggs, who was the original prankster, kind of fake news artist. He's a really amazing guy. Google him if you know nothing about him. And we've shown, I guess, how many installments? Eight installments. And we showed a documentary about Joey a few years ago. Really amazing guy, amazing artist. And then this is a film from Malaysia about um, phone scams. And then this is an animation by a Jersey filmmaker about uh, sweaty boobs. So it kind of fits the female motif. The only exception I would think is the Joey Skaggs film. It's the, it's the anomaly, but Joey is such a great guy and I needed to find a home for him on the schedule. And I thought it'd be nice to have a different flavor. So back to festival site to get back to where we were. You want to buy an all access pass, it's $100. It's a great deal. It's like half price. If you want to watch all the movies, you absolutely want to get um, an all access pass. You can go to menu to find other ways to buy tickets and stuff. If you want to learn about each individual film, there's a film guide page and you can see each one of the films are listed. And you work your way down, Innocent Observer. Uh, Wiener's all the way at the bottom. Seeing other people is down there too other people, Wiener. And so you can go to tickets. You can also go to schedule, which is a linear version of the schedule with big pictures and blurbs about all the films. And that's basically it. We just go back to the welcome page. I think I covered everything. And uh, you work your way down to get driving directions and stuff like that. Just explore the site. There's a lot of interesting information. Each individual program is $15. And the great thing about that is that it's good for the hybrid version, which means you can watch it online and or watch it in person. And we have some crazy people that watch the films online during the day. And then they know the filmmaker is coming um, because we announced that on our social media pages on Instagram and on Facebook. We dropped Twitter for um, political reasons. We don't want to have anything to do with Elon Musk. And we're very upfront about that. So um, we're not on Twitter anymore, but we are on the other sites. And we will be sharing introductions by filmmakers. I believe I have some of them from you guys. Um, we'll be sharing, sharing trailers and many newspaper stories that will be coming out. So you want to keep connected with us. You go to our social media pages, which you can find on our website on the njfilmfest.com site. I'm going to stop sharing because it's time to say goodbye to you guys.
I want to thank you all. We look forward to seeing your films on our big screen. And I want to thank you for hanging out with us for the last half hour. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.